All right, everyone. Hope you got your popcorn, your uh, your beverages, your uh. I don't even know what you guys are drinking and eating. We got Spiral Orange up next, though. It's going to be an any percent race between a uh, Ramatron and a uh, Eraser, so that's going to be quite an interesting race. Tuka here is going to help them commentate. So, uh, <laughs> well, what can we expect from this one? What kind of amazing gameplay? Um, all I'm going to say is that if we would have done this race two years ago, um, the estimate would have been probably one and a half hours. So, all right. Um, all right, I so won't that's say the... what changed, but uh, can look yeah. forward to that. Yeah, that's a 50 minute time save. All right. Uh, feel free to lead them in. Uh, right, we're just waiting you. for a racer. I don't think he's in the call yet, but that's fine. There he is. There he is. Hello. <laughs> bonjour. Pardon. <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Hello. All right. You guys are free, free, feel free to count down when you're ready. Yes. So um, I guess the race can start in five, four, three, two, one. Fusion. <laughs> Good luck, lads. Good luck. But isn't the game name Orange? Um, yes, let's mute Eraser right away. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes, uh, this race is, race is brought to you by the holy trinity of uh, Croatian Spiral Fusion speedrunning. That is um, Eraser, Mike, yes. CD Romatron, and me, Topoloni1. And oh. for, for those unfamiliar with the game, um, lucky you, because... <laughs> This game is uh, somewhat different from the Spyro games you might know, as there is uh, there is some platforming involved here in this game. But in principle, along with Crash Fusion, the kind of sister game of this one, or however you want to call it, um, this is more of a mini game collection. So similar to the to the kind of concept from the original Crash trilogy, um, there will be different warp rooms or hub worlds and in order to progress to the next one we have to clear five levels and as i said the the point is that the levels are more of mini games than real platformers for example the first one as you see here is a jeep mini game the only thing you can do is steer left and right um the level is an auto scroller so the only thing you can do is touch the end portal as quickly as possible and what you can also do is jump and shoot um, we will see a variety of different mini games throughout this um, throughout this race very little of them will be fun or look fun <laughs> but I, if you if you I run these games long enough um, your, your brain will trick you into thinking they are fun to play Eraser, you agree, right? That's what I you want totally to say. Right I totally agree. Now. I yes. mean, it's not like we spend a whole weekend just playing this together. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Extended weekend, even. I think it was four days. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like you arrived on Thursday and we played until Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I think we have an issue. Like. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay. Um, second mini game. Um, as you see that is that um, the that this game just like the other two Sparrow GBA games are 2D platformers which I mean makes kind of sense it's uh, with a lot of hardware limitation to to the um, old Game Boy Advance games so um, like the Jeep was 2D going from left to right the tank is 2D top down the hub world is 2D um, which of course, makes things um, a bit easier, a bit more limited, um, which was also useful for testing Crash Fusion, because for people who are familiar with testing, um, with making tool tool assisted speedruns um, in in two day in two D games, there's way not way less optimization potential, but it's easier to optimize. Um, the movement and general gameplay so that's one advantage um yeah as for other two so this is the third sparrow gba game um the first one was season of 
Ice. The second one was Season of Flame. Correct me if I'm wrong. I got You're the order wrong, wrong but there is yeah. the Hack of the Rhinox in the middle. Also known as Spyro Arena or Spyro Rumble, I think. Yeah, that like the Arena name the UK. Yes, we'll just At ignore that thing exists. <laughs> Attack of the Rhinox, I think. Uh, like it's in okay, this so... marathon. Right, yeah, but the but the more prominent games, I'd argue, are Season of Ice and Season of Flame. Yeah, they are really the most popular one. Yeah. Right, and then for whatever reason, um, Vicarious Visions had the the urge to make a mini game collection. And yeah, in this is a this is a thing. Let's just take it for what it is and then enjoy it, embrace it. And that's all we can do, really. I would say. No, we can just ignore it. You can also game and. <laughs> uh. Yeah, also races. Um, <laughs> races uh, pretty close so far. I think there's a one second difference or so. Um, modulo the the possible difference in like stream delay one or two seconds, but. Um, so far, it's really close, and it's, I would say that the race is decided as soon as somebody fails a mini game <laughs> and thus loses one minute or so. Yeah, nice way to put pressure on the runner, commentator. I mean, just don't suck. Uh, that's the best advice I can give. <laughs> I, I mean, we have known each other for like six years now. Did you ever see me not sucking? <laughs> So we actually do need to be careful about dying in the overworld because since we no longer do all the mini games three times in this category, we're Spoiler. super low on gems and dying will take away so many gems. Yeah, but uh, what Mike said is true. So um, maybe to explain what I said in the introduction to this race, where does the 50 minute time save come from? Um, the intended way to beat this game is to beat the all the mini games in the first four worlds three times um, because that's the requirement to get into the fifth and final hub world and there will be a, a portal or portal like thing um, at the or between world four and world five which will check um, whether you've done every minigame three times or not. If you haven't, then, well, portal stays closed, and once you complete it, everything thrice, it's, um, it opens. And luckily, and also unexpectedly, we found a skip for this a, I think it was roughly a year ago or so, maybe a bit more, like one and a half years ago. Um, well, the point is, it wasn't super long ago, so this is not, this is not something um, known for 10 years by whoever would be considered an OG runner, but um, something rather recent, namely we found a um, way to skip this portal, this clear check, or this, yeah, this, this, um, this, this way of the game checking whether we did everything three times. Um, and now what Mike said, um, also, is I, yeah, I guess makes a bit more sense to viewers who are not familiar with this game and uh, even more so the run, because every time you clear a mini game, you get gems, and those gems you need, for example, to unlock for the portals. And for the first completion of mini game, mini game, you get ten gems, and for the second one, twenty, and then. For the third one and every subsequent attempt, which in theory you can do, but there's no point to that, um, that would be 30 gems. And the problem, quote unquote, problem is that the portal in um, every, or the, yeah, the, the further you get in the game, the more expensive it becomes to unlock portals. So in the first world, uh, unlocking it's a portal, like so, unlocking a minigame is 10 gems, then in the second world, 20, 30, and so on. And just to finish this uh, this 
kind of math um, scenario. In the fifth world, just like in every other world, there are five mini games we have to complete in order to get to the final boss. Five mini games times 50 gems will be 250, just for the final world. Um, so that's the amount of gems we'll have to consider or bring into the final world. Um, because doing everything once will just give us 10 gems per portal. That's the the one kind of... It's, it's not really a downside, but that's one of the... Um, th one of the changes we had to consider due to this new skip um, that we actually have to do money routing now. Because without that, you'd just get 60 gems per mini game because you completed it three times. Um, so you... I'm not even sure. Do you cap out? Do you hit 999 in old any percent? Uh, I would say yes, but I'm not sure. Uh, I don't. I, no, no, you don't. You don't. No, don't. Okay, I but don't. Uh, but either way, you don't run into issues with gems, or didn't past tense. This is um, not a thing anymore. But yeah, like we are not finishing with a lot of extra. Like in general, it's between two and six. Yeah, the the gems are very uh, tightly and thoroughly routed, routed out for this category. Also, uh, you can see sometimes when I'm going down a ledge, I'm flaming at the same time just to fall down quicker. So it's called flame drop, and it saves. Right. Yeah. I don't know how many flames, but it saves some. It saves time and looks cool, so it's very strong on the, on the uh, swag points. Also, greetings to um, one of the next runners, actually one of the participants of the race after this, Cameron Vengeance. <laughs> Uruguay's very own Cameron Vengeance. <laughs> yeah, but I'm for Asukiro, so I won't say I to Cameron. All right, yeah. Team French is too strong. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> Okay, right now Eraser is in uh, Snow Steps. This is one of two minigames with this strange magnet foot robot thing. Well, the only thing you can do aside from changing your position is swap whether you're attached to the top or the bottom. Um, it's, this is also, aside from the tank levels, one of the longest minigames um, or longest type of minigames, just because the, the scrolling speed of the screen is so incredibly slow. So completing this mini games take this mini game takes one and a half to two minutes, um, depending whether you do this one, the one in world two, or the one in world five. And oh my God. on the other hand, Mike currently did, and now he finished um, the mini game in where where Spyro flies in something. Like I have no idea what that even is. It's UFO-like, but it looks more like a like the, GBA. The I don't know. Of, uh, well, like the Spyro 3 Sorcerer fight. You think so? Maybe. I mean, there's, there's a bit of resemblance. Uh, I might give you that one. Also, I only just played ETD the other no! day, and I the tank is probably supposed to be the tank from the tank minigame okay. in that. Ah, okay. Mike with the lore. <laughs> Very much appreciated. This game has both the deepest lore and the deepest mechanics out of the entirety of the Spyro franchise. Yes. <laughs> Don't at me. Actually, have we seen a, a frame perfect typer boost so far? I don't think so. I didn't catch any. Oh, Neither World 1 nor World 2. I didn't go for any, so yeah. Okay. Uh, since I fell down and missed that level, I had to go back a little, so I lost right, a yeah. little time about the other one, but yeah, quick backup yeah. at least. <laughs> Neck and neck, both runners entered the tank minigame for two the same second, I would say. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Stalker, do also, you want to explain uh, what happened with the weird menu thing? Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess there was some kind of weird teleport. I've never seen that before. We should investigate that. <laughs> yeah. It might save some time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, 45 minutes, one hour? Might be, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's the mechanic 
we which will be or which is the crucial part in the skip which will say 50 minutes later on the clear check for the mini games of world one through four and that's called limbo warp it's a it's a rather strange mechanic um in the in the main menu of this game you have um, the option to go into story mode what we're currently doing or we have the option to go into the party mode where you can just replay all the mini games and different difficulties um also very nice collision on the ice wall there by the way um um you can replay the mini games in the party mode different difficulties you don't get anything from it you can just do it for fun why ever playing the tank level again outside of the story would be considered fun but that's another problem we'll not discuss right now. anyways if we play a or if we start a um, mini game in the party mode and we or not, I have to put it differently there there are just like there are different worlds, there are different tabs in this party mode. So the first tab features all the minigames from World 1, then from World 2, and so forth. And the trick consists of changing the tab in this party mode and very rapidly hitting A um, after that's done. What will happen is that the game will not load the minigame, but it will, it will load the corresponding world the corresponding main hub um, which is not supposed to happen at all and the the trick is called limbo warp um, or the, the world is called limbo world because it's not the real um, the real world of the story mode I'm currently in but it's a it's a kind of limbo copy of it um, we will see that later on when we'll we'll collect some gems in the third world in the limbo version of the third world and then you'll really see what i'm talking about um and what we can do and that's really the crucial step while we cannot um go between limbo worlds we can change the checkpoint location by entering a mini game in the limbo world and that's something um, Mike and Razor have been have been done already to get to the exit portal of the second world. That only saved a few seconds, like 10 or 15, I don't remember. Um, but that's the very same mechanic we'll use later on. There will be a small twist later on onto why that works, why we can skip ahead of this clear check portal. Um, but the, the basic mechanic is abusing this the, the weird party mode, um, which will let you change the checkpoint location. Yeah. Uh, one of the advantage of the Limbo world is that you, we can also get gems on it. And uh, that will be useful for our route, because since, uh, as Tukas said before, we are not getting a lot of gems, we will uh, we'll take advantage of the, of the world tree second part that has like a lot of gems just near the portal yeah exactly um there's a there's a, there's a small constraint to that um because if you collect gems in this limbo world so the gems which are not red the red gems always respawn but all the other ones um they are at least in the main hub or in the story mode they are unique so once you pick them up um, the game actually autosaves every time you pick up a unique gem, so a non-red gem, and that gem will never respawn. The Limbo World um, also features all these gems, and some gems you can get twice, so once in the main, once in the uh, once once in the Limbo World. But um, the gems in the Limbo World will not respawn infinitely. It's 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 kind of weird. Um, what, I, what I believe, if I recall correctly, what the Limbo World is doing is there's a... Um, or, or not to put it differently, the Limbo World is not checking which unique gems you're getting, but only the number of unique gems you're getting. And depending on how many you got, 
um, it will take away the corresponding number from the main world. Not the exact gems, but um, you can... The, the point is the, these gems will not respawn infinitely. They might respawn once or twice, depend, depending on how many you're taking. But um, there is, although it's not fully obvious, but there, there is there's a weird connection between the two worlds in terms of gems. Just like in terms of checkpoints or other mechanics. Also, let's please not forget that this game and it, all its all, all its mini games are very janky. It might not look like it here, but uh, especially in the nowadays in the completionist categories where you have to play every mini game three times because you get uh, trading cards. Um, the difficulty of the mini games is um, is kind of turned up, which usually means, for example, for the pinball game that the pinball moves faster on the second and third turn. The pinball can move so fast that it just goes straight through Spyro. And every runner knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Especially Mike. When Mike first ran this game, I would even say Mike was the OG completionist runner of um, Spyro. At the very least, the first serious one. Oh. Um, they are... If they still exist, there are a lot of beautiful clips of the pinball physics just completely breaking down. There would... I still had it, like one ball on the stage, and it, the game said I lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What <laughs> like before, I started playing the game. Toka was sending me the, the clip, and I was like, "Okay, I will never touch this game." <laughs> And then at some point he had world record. Eraser. Poor soul. Yeah, but no. Like that was a mistake. That was just a mistake. I should stop playing this game, but this game is like a drug, you know? You know it's bad for you, but you still do it. <laughs> I think Eraser, I know, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> I'm telling to everyone that is watching and doesn't understand how bad and how cool this game is. Yes. <laughs> uh, also, uh, I did probably the worst menuing of all time, but uh, it's okay. That's fine. Like, um, after a level, you can do a light menu warp or a full menu warp. So, when you're doing a light menu warp, which means uh, quitting the, the, uh, the game, going back to the menu, uh, where there is story mode, minigame, etc., and just going back in directly, you uh, just go back to the no, uh, to the portal you enter last, but when you do a full menu warp, so which uh, go back to the title screen when you can choose uh, the what is it called? Uh, the I can even speak English uh, the the save. Uh, you uh, you go back to the beginning of this screen. So right now I'm in world three, uh, screen two. So I went back to the beginning of Squid 2 instead of going back to the boss portal. But I wanted to go back there. So that was probably confu confusing, sorry. <laughs> oh. Right now I'm on uh, Nina. So, you know, you just do some Ole. <laughs> I got. And after that, I have to flame the oven like this. Yeah. Which a lot of casual players back in the days probably didn't find out. Um, or, or only find out after some amount of time. Because it's very much, at least to me, it was very much non-obvious what to do. Like you're in this room, the spikes coming from the, from the uh, roof. And the game doesn't tell you what to do. Like, yeah. good luck figuring it out yourself. Yeah, it took me a while. Like, I think you were the one who told me, oh, you just have to flame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like so confused. <laughs> yeah, it's great game design. Yeah. Okay, Mike's still in Nina, but he's about to be... Um, he's about to finish. The boss... There we go. You can actually... It's a nice little time saver. You can um, kind of damage boost into the final portal. You cannot clip through the ceiling, but you can kind of squeeze through, although you're getting damaged. Um, 
just saves what, a few what seconds. Find, like fascinating uh, and find just some way to like damage boost through it because the hitbox is yeah. always there. Yeah. That's 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 a dream. I tried for so long. Also, yet another jeep, jeep level. level. Yeah, jeep level on second and third pass are really tough because there is some mine just uh, near the oops, uh, near every jump you have to make. So you have to uh, explode them with your cannon, but aiming with the cannon is tough. Yeah, the the way you're aiming with the cannon of the jeep is depending on how long you hold the shoot button, and it will shoot further or well shorter and um, takes quite a while to get used to the problem is that the mines which are appearing in uh, on the second and third pass of these levels have a very small hitbox and um, once you got hit you cannot jump so especially mines close to the edge once you hit them you will just fall down and die and there's nothing you can do um, yeah. Luckily, first pass is easy. You can just rush through it. Well, rush through. I mean, there's auto scroll, but <laughs> clear, cleared without problems, I guess. Yeah, because yeah, honestly, and just to mention that this guy right there, Toka, make me learn like completion is category first. So I had to do this uh, this kind of level three times in a row. Just saying. Ah, the good old days. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> That was just awful. Yeah. Like, imagine, like, you're. I, I didn't even know the game. Like, he was telling me to go left, right, etc., everywhere. <laughs> and he made me play that kind of level. Like, why? Also, oh, speaking of collision in this game, nice one there. <laughs> Can just clip through the wall. Oops. <laughs> when yeah. I clip through the, the. There's just a small gap between collision and texture. Yeah, but. At some point, it blocks you off. But it can definitely kill you because, like, if you come from the left, uh, from, from the side, uh, you will just clip and die. That's true, yeah. Actually, um, a lot of the later levels, levels in World 4 and 5, the idea of difficulty the developers had was to create paths or passages which you have to know how to maneuver around um, because the screen scroll. The vertical screen scroll going forward is is somewhat fast in these levels and for some passages you have to go from the right side all the way to the left and to the right to the left and if you don't do it early enough um, the scroll will kill you and you die and that's fair um, video gaming apparently according to their definition <laughs> I think it's the worst in and uh, Bob Five, the um, the UFO flight mini game. That's Oops. Um, yeah, what yeah. I, what I just talked talked about was will be very very prevalent there. <laughs> also, here another Limbo Warp by Mike. So right now he's in the Limbo version of the Third World, where he got all the gems needed to um, yeah, kind of stack up on gems enough to um, to be able to open everything in the final world. I got a uh, really small yeah. elevator skip from Eraser, yes. Yeah, it's really tough, honestly, like yeah. uh, to get the so right like timing. like five seconds or so. Yeah. World record does five, it. Like three, four, so. Yeah. Ah, actually, it's quite a quite a Could bit. Could be fine. Yeah, yeah the, the elevator is not that fast, actually, it's true. Yeah. So tank level in World 4 is the easiest one <laughs> in the first one because you have to stay on the bottom most of the time. You will have to move like two times. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. It's also the, it's also the longest one. This one takes. Um, yeah. I think two, two minutes, minutes ten. Yeah, per something pass. like that. Yeah. Like the only tank level, like when you increase the difficulty of the level, it's always the same layout. Like only the enemy kind of change, like the, and you have to hit them like two and three times depending on the level, uh, on the yes. difficulty. Yeah. But on the first wall, uh, the hardest difficulty on, tank, on the tank level is actually pretty uh, smart because you have to do the level, but from like in the reverse. Backwards. 
yeah, yeah, bug falls. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's actually. Although that fun. that only happened once. It feels like an idea they had, they implemented. They were like, eh, it's. I mean, it's okay, but we don't have to do it again. And they just scrapped it from the other worlds. <laughs> just did yeah, it once. But, yeah, that's kind of fun for it because honestly, yeah. I just loved it. Yeah, I loved the idea. Really... Yeah. Yeah, because w when you realize that it's a level backwards, you are like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Eraser got a point. Um, when the difficulty goes up, the level layout, aside from that one exception we just talked about, um, the level layout for all the mini games will stay the same. Um, but for example, in the tank levels, everything needs three hits um, in order to get destroyed. And for, for example, for the bridge levels, um, where you have to throw Molotovs at the Ranox, the Ranox just move faster and throw faster and so forth. It, like every, every type of minigame has a unique twist to them on the second and third pass. Um, where unique doesn't necessarily mean good or fun, but well, unique at least is true. Mm. Did I just miss some gems? I think I did, right? I, I be, did not look yeah. at your screen, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, and I wasn't even paying attention, so wait. Let's read the Cortex. Well, uh... Cortex gives 80 gems, right? Then you have 180. Oh, okay, okay, then it's good. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, if he gives 80, then it's uh, it's good. Yeah, I was, I was, I was really confused by that. So, yeah, this is Cortex. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm delaying my jump just to skip one hit. So since I kind of fell at first, I wanted to redo it, just so you can see it. Uh, excuse me, thank you. So normally you have to finish the fight a little later, but now I can finish it now. So here I'm in 5-1, I'm going there. Limbo. Up, and boom, 5-2. Oops. And there we go. That's how to skip the the room where the game checks whether you've done everything three times. It's, it only takes a few seconds to do, but it saves uh, 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 45 to 50 minutes, yeah. Actually, the way this works is kind of interesting. So every world is subdivided into two halves. Um, so for example, the first world has a first half and then a second half to, between these two worlds is a portal which um, you have to pay a, a few um, a few gems to to open once and for all um, but the fifth world only has like only consists of one part there's no transition between world for five one or five two that doesn't exist in, in that sense world five is unique and it turned out that the world five is actually world five two so the first half of world five is the clear check room and the second half is the actual fifth world and here come here the the idea of the limbo warp comes comes into play because we can warp from the first to the second half um that is from the um, entry portal of the world to the boss portal of the world which of course is still unlocked but the point is that you cross the barrier between first and second half oh without having to open the gate and that's the whole idea of the skip oh. that's a really unique skip and uh, it uh, it uh, thanks to that like so any person was really doable because before as as we said like it was yeah no no way someone said yeah, what record do record it. it was like one hour 20 something 20 i believe like yeah, yeah. one two x it was sub 130 yeah, yeah. for sure yeah yeah one um, two x oh, yeah. but it was way above the one hour mark so yeah, i know i know it's so. 34 minutes yeah 34 minutes 30 -ish seconds i think something like that you don't even know your world record by heart. <laughs> I know all of my world record. Hmm. <laughs> it's easy. It's 59, 21, and that's it. <laughs> Having one world record is useful. That's true. Yeah, so right here you're seeing um, the thing I talked about. On, like on your razor screen, this you have to go right and left. And if you realize it too slowly, 
um, you'll just die. You even saw there that the last corner he cut was somewhat tight, like not really, but somewhat. And Razor knows what he's doing. He's played this game a number of times, so um, for a, for someone who plays this for the first time, he'll most likely end up having trouble with this level. Um, so the, the game is punishing them for not knowing the level, which is, I would say at least is dumb, but who am I? I'm not a game developer. But in my opinion, that's dumb. That's very I, dumb mini game design. I totally agree. Like on pass two and three, I will understand, but not on pass one. On pass one. So this level. Also, yeah. I had only one gem left. So when when we were saying like uh, we were tight, I was not kidding. So yeah, uh, this is the hardest for sure. And by the hardest, you mean the easiest, right? Because it's, yeah, sure. it's pretty simple, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty free. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no! <laughs> this of. level is a nightmare. Just like... die twice so I can catch up, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where you are, actually. I was only focusing on my gameplay. <laughs> Since I had not really too much time to de rust because I had a lot of tech issue basically since like 5.30ish p.m. Uh, and right now it's midnight for me. Uh, I was I was only uh, trying to fix my tech issue <laughs> with the game. I was supposed to play the game for the whole afternoon, like well, from 5 p.m. But uh, yeah, I could, uh, uh, Eraser, sorry to, to interrupt. Uh, Phoenix, the run, like Eraser will finish in round about one minute, just so you're aware, because he asked in chat. Oh yeah, but if I die... So, uh... Sorry for interrupt. Yeah, but why would you die? It's easy. <laughs> As you said that, I got it. Oh my god. Keep saying it's free. Keep saying it's free. <laughs> free, 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 free. Eraser wins. There's no way Eraser will lose from here on out. <laughs> well, now, now that's a true statement. Yeah, yeah now no, no, it's true. Yeah, now it's true. Uh, All right, so... Uh, for Razor, so there's only the final, final boss, boss missing, and the final boss takes um, 15 seconds. No. <laughs> Not in Spiral Fusion. See? Oh, oh my god. But it takes like 12.7 seconds? Well, in-game time, yeah. But the in-game time is slower than right. real time. And get to on time. Time. And the Razor wins! F first French win of the day. I'm counting on <laughs> Asukero now. <laughs> Team Asu, France. yeah, Asu, you better win. <laughs> so that was probably like a high 35 or low 36, something like that. Yeah, like low mid 36, run about that, yeah. Yeah, okay, like with all the menuing mistake, it's okay, I guess. Yeah, it's all right. It's surely not all right, right? Okay, thanks, Phoenix. <laughs> also, Mike, uh, yeah, one sure minute away from finishing. Well, he's now I mean, the... I'm just at the end of the level, so... Yeah. Very close to the end, then there's the final boss. Um, fun fact for the final boss, the uh, IL world record for the final boss is tied between... How many people? Not enough. Eight? Not enough. That's that's uh, very <laughs> true, yes. It's <laughs> Yeah, honestly, like it's it's such a weird game. As I said before, like it's a kind of game that doesn't look fun when you play it a bit. It's not fun no, when you start running it. It's, fun. Yeah. it's just you know you 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 really don't want to stop. Like never. Yeah, um, it's 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 very weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I mean, you 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 can spend your entire also, Sunday GG, just doing IELTS. GG, Mike. Nice. For the first uh, fusion race, like spiral fusion race ever. Yeah. Actually, for most of the run, was it was pretty close, and only at the very end it uh, separated a bit. So yeah, I it was a good race. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's what seems good. Like in this game, I think like in a race setting, is that we are always close as long as no one dies. Yeah. So that. And if we the levels, at least the. Absolute majority of the levels on first pass should not be a problem. Um, yeah, but maybe, maybe sometimes if you're not paying paying sufficient attention, but 
Yeah. Also, like Molotov level can be a little tricky because they are kind of random. So, so you can lose a bit of time there. Uh, yeah, also, the, the enemies in the Molotov level can walk off screen and never come back. Also, yeah. Mike <laughs> would know about that. <laughs> like, for real, if you want to just love a lot, just go watch all Mike's video about fusion. <laughs> yeah, all these clips are fantastic. Like, honestly, they are, they are just the best. So, yeah. Uh, all I right, hope you then. enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, it's just a shame this is the, the last good game in the marathon, but I hope you guys... <laughs> oh, all right, buddy. All right, this is Fire Orange. Just know your place. Disgusting. <laughs> but no, thank you guys for the run. It was very entertaining. Uh, Mike, maybe next time, instead of uh, talking shit, you should uh, get good. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, good job, Eraser. And uh, yeah, next, next up is going to be SR2. SRT2, uh, a good game. <laughs> Let's go, Cameron. Woo! Let's go, Asu. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's gonna be Asu, uh, Zik, and Cameron. So stick around for that. Grab Camera some more popcorn. Camera, Cameron. Camera. Asu, Kero. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. I'll see you guys in uh, ten-ish minutes.